Hey everybody, my name is Tanisia Davis and I want to talk to you really quick about different real estate brokerages, what the differences are, how they're operated, and why that even matters. So with that being said, I'm going to jump right into any international real estate owned company. So a company or brokerage that is worldwide. So I want to break down the organization of what this would look like and I want you to tell me if it's similar to what your brokerage looks like right now. So with this, this would be a brokerage, like I said, that's operating on an international level, which means they've taken the entire world and they've broken it down into regions. And out of those regions, they've been able to hire people to find someone to purchase a franchise. So those are gonna be the owners of the locally owned brick and mortar locations, and they're actually gonna hold all of the risk, okay? So with these owners, in order to operate, they're gonna need to hire managers, they're gonna need to hire staff, they're gonna need to um, hire recruiters, okay? All of these different pieces, because they're going to want to attract and bring agents into their brokerage, okay? So in this model, the agent sits here at the bottom and they're making money for the company. Whenever money is made, it's going to be paying all of these different levels as expenses before there's profit. And sometimes with these international companies, that profit is then shared back with the agent, okay? So why does all of this matter? And does this look like the company that you work for? And for Glenn Stanford, who did the napkin presentation, which I'm modeling for you guys, he's been in real estate way longer than I have. And this was the model for Coldwell Banker since 1906 for Remax since 1972, um, Century 21 since 1973, and Keller Williams since 1983. And what the main disruptor was, was Glenn Stanford from Keller Williams came and kind of flipped this whole reverse, um, this whole kind of like upside down pyramid back around. So by doing that, he put agents at the top. And by doing this with a cloud-based brokerage, which means there's not brick and mortar locations, it got rid of all of these tiers and expenses. And so with agents, they partner with EXP. And the three main disruptors are one, disruptive technology through a cloud office and cloud-based um, brokerages. So we don't have brick and mortar locations, okay? The second one is every single agent is an owner, right? We all have, hold stock EXPI, and so we're owners and partnerships with EXP. And the third is revenue share. And if you haven't re heard or understand what revenue share is or what that looks like, check out my other videos because knowing the difference of how your brokerage operates is going to be what the potential opportunities are for you. And for me, I was with Keller Williams for two years. Fantastic, loved every moment, had a ton of opportunity. But this was the model I was working with. And anytime I made money, I contributed 30% of that until I capped to paying for these different levels and I never saw it back. Whereas with EXP, whenever I make that 20% contribution, because with them it's an 80-20 split, so I get to actually keep 10% more, I actually have a partnership with EXP, which means I get stock bonuses when I sell real estate. I also, with revenue share, give back to those who brought me to the company. So if I in turn do the same and bring someone to me, um, to over to EXP, just for an example, let's say I were to bring six agents to EXP, that equivalent is $2,800 a year if each of those are maximum performing, which is over $16,200 I would be getting on an annual basis. If all of them bring a friend, I would be at a total, if I were to add all of these numbers together, at $36,000 a year, right? And this is revenue share. And going into more detail, check out the other videos. But what I wanna ask is knowing the difference between your model of your brokerages, where the money's going, how it works, impacts you. And it impacts your ability for different revenue streams and things of that nature. So if you have more questions, please contact me. I'll put my contact information in the comments and I hope we can see each other soon. Thanks.